The financial crisis is a term coined by users from Kiwi Farms to describe the steep decline in the Chandler's family financial management beginning in early 2016. Signs of the Chandler's worsening finances were made apparent by the increased amount of begging videos and donation requests on Chris's YouTube and Facebook accounts. Chris has repeatedly shown through his actions and words that he has no idea how to handle money or manage his own finances. Between his impulse spending, his greed and selfishness, his unwillingness to save even the smallest amount of money and his massive sense of entitlement, he manages to demonstrate complete incompetence and ineptitude in managing financial affairs. Chris has repeatedly amassed debt on credit cards only to have his enabling parents bail him out multiple times. Too lazy to work, he refuses to make or follow any type of budget or financial plan, instead spending far beyond his means and expecting others to pay off his accumulated debt for him. It is clear that Chris has no idea what financial responsibility is and that his enabling delusional parents taught him nothing about how to handle finances while he was growing up. Irresponsible, careless and thoughtless, he fails at just about every single aspect of financial management that can be thought of. For the vast majority of Chris's adult life, his only source of income has been his tugboat that he received from the US federal government every month. In 2009, the payout was $809 a month, placing his annual income at $9,700. After Bob's death, Chris was given a survivor's benefit, increasing the amount to $1,300 per month and making his annual income a total of $15,600. Barb's income from social security and pension is around $1,200 a month or about $14,400 per year. Chris's parents originally took $450 from his pay as a fee for living in the 14 Branchland Court house. This payment was later increased to $565 and later on to $580 after Bob paid off Chris's enormous credit card debt. The rest of the tugboat generally went towards video games, junk food and other frivolous purchases. However, $229 per month or about $7.5 per day was and still is nowhere near enough to satisfy Chris's need for electronic entertainment, pornography, PlayStation Network downloads, a constant supply of chicken magnets nuggets, gallons of coke, and since the summer of 2009, alcohol. As of January 2010, he roughly owed $3,500 in credit card debt, some on cards of his own and some on cards he stole from his parents. Indeed, according to one of his bank statements, at the end of one month he had fewer than $3 left in his bank account. Even more, just by straight spending and no other extra income, he put himself $452 in the red. How much he got to keep later on is known. It's obvious that Chris has no grasp on the real value of money since he actively wastes as much of his monthly tugboat as possible on things like trading cards, sex toys, porn, video games, alcohol, makeup, toys, prostitutes and weekly lottery tickets. Chris is a self-admitted impulse buyer. His PlayStation Network account shows that he's never played more than half of the games he has bought. And yet, astoundingly, he's still gone out of his way to buy all available downloadable content for every single PlayStation PlayStation 3 game that he's ever purchased, and even for games he doesn't own. And he also furthermore promoted his Sony fanboyism by later buying a Sony LCD HDTV for his bedroom, which likely cost him about $1,500. All the while, Chris bought his clothes at secondhand discount thrift stores. Usually, children are taught the value of money at a very young age. Not in Chris's case, apparently. In September 2013, Chris complained about he and his mom going through emotional depressing and financial financial downfall to the depths of greatly poor and just getting by, making it clear that the family income had dipped since Bob's passing. However, these supposedly lean times were apparently not enough to motivate Chris to get a job or even to stop buying games as evidenced by him racking up over $1000 in game purchases on The Simpsons Tapped Out. Throughout the summer of 2014, Chris continued to spend thousands of dollars on Lego and other frivolities, all while whining and complaining on Facebook about his and his mother's poor finances. Chris financed this spending primarily with money from selling custom arts and crafts on his eBay account. Offering free shipping to customers, Chris would receive money from customers and then pay for the shipping out of his own 
own pocket. However, Chris would immediately send money as soon as it was deposited into his account, often leaving him unable to ship products to customers who had already paid him because of his own financial responsibility and negligence. When several of Chris's eBay customers filed complaints against him because Chris failed to ship an order as promised and obligated, Chris responded by harassing and trolling the customers, posting the personal information in a public post on his Facebook account. In light of this, Chris's future money-making respects from eBay are dim, as most prospective future customers probably wouldn't want to risk being harassed or scammed by Chris. All the while, even as Chris's credit card debt continued to spiral out of control, Chris continued to buy thousands of dollars of video games, Lego and other frivolities. As if this were not bad enough, just days after putting his and Barb's cars up for sale at exorbitant prices, Chris went out and bought a 2010 Ford Focus, stating on Facebook that he had been approved for a loan, probably at an extremely high rate. He also stated that paying for insurance on his new car was killing him, implying that either the insurance payment was costly, that he was having trouble paying for it, or both. In January 2015, it was leaked that Chris had spent an absurd amount of money on Nintendo consoles and games, racking up 585 transactions in the last 4.5 years, a list which includes useless shovelware, hordes of first-party Nintendo software, virtual console games, and both versions of a game he doesn't even like. 276 of these purchases are known to be handheld games, 8 are known to be video game consoles, buying 4 DSs and DSis, and 75 of which are known to be console games. The grand total cost of all of Chris's listed purchases is of over $7,460, or about $1,660 a year. Keep in mind, 39% of purchases Chris has on his account are not yet specified, meaning that their cost is not included in this already insanely high number. This information comes on the heels of Chris begging people for money to fix his mother's cavities, as well as the financial worries that his trials will undoubtedly cause. In July 2016, a field agent provided the following accounts of Chris in a painfully awkward situation where he did not have enough money to pay for his junk food at a gas station. My friend walks into a gas station slash convenience store on the northern edge of Charlottesville. Chris is trying to buy $7 or so of junk food type stuff, but he only has $5 in cash. The cashier tries to make him understand he owes $2 more. Chris seems to understand, but he's slow to process what to do about it. My friend, who is second in line, picks out two ones, says, here you go, and puts them on the counter. Chris, it seems more out of stupidity and confusion than malice, picks up the $2 and his purchases and makes to leave. My friend and the cashier both object and yell that he has to leave the $2 with the cashier. Chris doesn't seem to react. A dude who was behind both of them in line is between Chris and the door. As Chris passes him, he taps him to get his attention and says something like, hey buddy. Chris makes a get away from me hand wavy gesture without looking at any of the three of them and fairly loudly says, it's miss and hurries out of the door. Chris continues to his car in a half run, half walk as all three of the people in the store watch confused and amused. Chris pulls out of the parking spot but for some reason heads towards the back of the lot where there is no exit. As Chris gets to the back of the lot, he stops, backs up a few feet, tries to turn the car around, doesn't make it, backs up again, and finally gets around, essentially making a five-point turn in a fairly large empty parking lot. Chris drives past the store again and not looking inside, and finally drives off. One dreads to imagine how his financial incompetence will affect him once Barb is dead. Knowing Chris, and while it is quite tragic, he'll probably continue in his destructive spending patterns until he loses everything he has, and even then he'll learn nothing. Bob encouraged his son to remain unemployed since he believed that Chris would earn more money from his monthly tugboat than he would from getting a job. However, this assumption was, and still is, inaccurate. Minimum wage in the state of Virginia is $7.25 an hour. If Chris were to somehow do a complete 180 on his life and begin working a full 40 hours a week, his monthly payment before taxes and fees, that would be about $1,260. That's $15,000. 100 annually. Subtracting the money he pays his mom every month to live, as well as the 5% tax his income range mandates in the state of Virginia, Chris could very likely be left with a ridiculous $8,000 which no one Chris would be spent on yet more frivolities. Contrast this with the $2,750 Chris pulls in annually from the government after paying off his parents and it becomes clear that Bob's encouragement came from either thinking Chris would lose his social security if employed, which he wouldn't, or the more
more accurate notion that his son is a useless failure. A very likely explanation for Chris's reckless spending is that his parents are at fault, to a degree at least. In addition to coddling him throughout his entire life, they manage to make sure that Chris has never felt the repercussion for his exorbitant spending or for anything else by taking over paying Chris's credit card debt, regularly giving him about $6 a day for small things, buying him fast food on a daily basis and continuing to let himself blow all of his money on frivolities and useless stuff as opposed to essentials like hygiene products, courses that could eventually help him onto the employment ladder or clothing that isn't unbelievably tacky. Whenever Chris manages to get himself into trouble, he knows that Barb will come running to his aid and defend him and dig him out of whatever mess he's managed to get himself into, even if it's clear that he is in the wrong. This enabling is the most likely explanation in addition to his poor impulse control for why Chris spends himself into debt as much as he does. Chris believes that by receiving and spending his tugboat on useless junk, he's aiding the economy in paying for other people's tugboats. This is damningly moronic conviction since sales tax goes to the state government and these tugboats are paid with federal payroll tax dollars. Interestingly enough, while he has no clue how to handle money, Chris has an unhealthy fixation on his material possessions. In Vivitheg's aim chat, he stated that he did not want to sell any of his stuff and in the Miyamoto saga, refused to sell anything to help raise money for the trip to Redmond. While Chris mocked Lars's habit of buying and collecting model boats and add-ons for them after learning about it from Jackie, he failed to realize that Lars's supposed habit was directly parodying his obsession of purchasing and hoarding video games and DLCs even for games that he didn't even own. His mother has served as a bad influence regarding Chris's beliefs in material goods as she would frequently shop at Goodwill and compulsively hoard the purchases which both wasted money and helped turn their house into a fire hazard. On the 16th of May 2019, Chris tweeted a screenshot of an NBC story about how ex-EPA chief Scott Prout spent nearly $124,000 on excessive airfare. Chris then showed off his complex views on the US economy by saying, Hey, everyone, here's a think piece. Firstly, if people didn't overspend so much, then there would be more money to give to charities around the world. And then that brought to mind that if things had not gone up in price, I know about inflation and that more money has been officially printed and distributed over the decades, there would be more to freely give to those unfortunate. Why back in the day we used to pay a nickel for Hershey bar. A nickel. Sick. Now it's a dollar, dollar fifty. We could be using that dollar forty-five to feed the hungry everywhere. But everyone got greedy for the green and don't appreciate it as much. A nickel. Yep, grandpa. People have done goof with inflation and crap. Sad emoji. On the 10th of January 2014, Branchland Court caught fire. This would undoubtedly place the Chandlers in a grim circumstance due to the cost of rebuilding the home and replacing what was lost. Some of his fans pulled their funds to send him a care package with a money order for $500. Many concerned about Chris due to his wasteful spending habits hoped that this would be the moment in Chris's life we finally woke up and realized the importance of saving when things like this happen. Unfortunately, not even that has broken Chris's thick skull. Throughout 2014, he wasted $5,000 on Lego sets. According to a troll with insider information, Chris was able to manage his own finances to a rudimentary degree even after Bob passed away, although he still has an issue with not saving money for potential emergencies. The troll also asserted that Chris's financial hardships are caused, in most part, by Barb helping herself to Chris's monetary accounts in order to attempt paying her out of control debts. Barb is the one who has serious debt. She fucked up Chris's budgeting by erratically taking money from Chris's account when she needs it, generally without warning. There are two types of Chris begging videos. One is when Chris wants a bit extra for some Legos. You can identify those videos by how vague Chris's requests are and how relaxed Chris is in the video. Chris isn't in meltdown mode in those videos. Now the other type of video is when Barb tried to snatch some money from Chris and Chris doesn't have anything for her. You can identify those videos by how freaked out Chris looks. He's visibly distressed and he's citing specific bills 
he's got to pay, usually things that seem unchrist like That's when Barb is freaking out at him for not having enough money to pay her debts. The thing is, the perception is that Chris is bad with money. He's not bad with money as far as monthly budgeting goes. Despite how foggy Chris's head is, he's got enough memory to recognize patterns in bills over the course of a few months. He knows that he's got to pay electricity bills and rent things like that, and he does do the math each month about what bills he's got to pay and how much it leaves him for Legos and food. You can't trust his begging. He begs because he wants more money, not because he's in any financial straits. That is, not including Barb. He lives cheaply as shit. He saves money by buying dollar store shit. He's the type of person to buy single ply toilet paper at the dollar store, but sometimes he'll splurge and treat himself to things like alcohol. He does this all the while meeting his obligations, like his minimum payments and his bills. Information from cousin Al revealed that Chris and Barb had an inheritance from Bob worth tens of thousands of dollars. However, Barb spent almost all of it on hiring Rob Bell to defend herself and Chris from legal charges incurred after the two of them went on a hit and run on Michael Snyder with a car. It should be noted that the state provided attorney would have been free and yielded the same result, pleading guilty, for the case was so cut and dry that even a lawyer of Bell's caliber had no chance of winning. In November 2014, Chris revealed to Renee that Barb was borrowing money from his life insurance. Although in a Kiwi Farms Post, in the wake of the bombshell that Chris had been in a sexual relationship with Barb, Null revealed that Chris nonchalantly stated in their final conversation with each other that he had control of her bank account by then, which allowed him to swipe $750. That said, it's unknown whether or not Barb actually used to exploit his finances before the roles eventually switched at some point, not to mention if so, when. In the comics, it's clear that Chris has no idea how money works. Sonichu, Rose Chu, Pat Chan, and most likely all of the other characters live off welfare just like Chris in real life. He seems to have no concept of tax, or that's the American populace who pays for his bullshit. Sonichu and Rostro are living in a two-story house with an attic offered by the city and they are paid an average of $3,500 a month just to hang around, and maybe for the occasional city defense or errands. While legislating as mayor of Quickville, he equated 10 years in prison to a $1,500 fine. He also equated 50 hours of community service to $500 for any sexual violation. In episode 19, it's shown that Quickville actually issues its own currency, in the form of C quarters and W quarters. The 10 C quarters make up a single W quarter, don't bother asking how that makes sense in any way, considering what the actual meaning of quarter is. Our best guess is a C quarter is equal to 25 cents and a W quarter is equal to 2.5 dollars. Nor does it explain why finances are levied in US dollars, perhaps to bolster the dictatorship's foreign currency reserves like North Korea. This makes even less sense considering Quickville is a part of the United States. States, let alone cities, cannot print their own money, despite holding considerable power over their own affairs. The constitution expressly forbids anyone else in the federal government from issuing currency. However, it has been somewhat common for companies, communities and local governments to issue localized currencies known as script, a depression era practice still seen from time to time. Chris being Chris and likely reading goosebumps instead of paying attention in class, likely is wholly unaware of this information. On the Wikipedia article on Sonichu, Chris wrote that Rose Chu is usually the one who cooks for her family, but when Sonichu cooks for his wife and kids, he will go as high as portions as a banquette, even though he only cooks for five individuals. This suggests that Sonic choose just as frivolous with money as his father. Chris shows us his complete misunderstanding of the stress his idea would put on the American social security system if he was left in charge of it in a text called A Sonic and Roast to Christmas Story. This is where the idea of soup hotels came from. Chris depicts soup hotels as buildings 10 stories tall with between 10 and 20 rooms per floor, equipped with single bathrooms, beds, lighting and cable television. Of course the homeless stay there for free, so instead of building homeless shelters with dormitories, common rooms and shared TV sets, Chris thinks the homeless should be treated to all the comforts of a hotel. This means that, in Quickville, there are around 1,500 homeless people left outside. This might be the result of the local industry, choked by heavy taxes, needed to pay these social expenses, being unable to make a profit there and thus moving away. In Sonichu issue 10, Ultra Sonichu and a bev eye of rose chews stop at a soup hotel. The building is labeled a soup hotel 17, implying that Quickville has had to 
to open at least 7 new homeless shelters in the span of a single month, or they're just bad at numbering the things. Or more tellingly, that the economy of Quickville is crashing to the ground extremely quickly. Now, focusing more on IRL Chris, in June 2017, Chris began to take his Patreon account more seriously and recommends drawing Sonichu comic pages. He has gotten several hundred dollars per month for his efforts, and payments continued until the 2nd of August 2021, when his Patreon account was shut down. As a result, begging had temporarily subsided. In mid-2018, however, begging resumed due to an alleged extortion plot by the Idea Guys which involved threatening to destroy Chris's imaginary land of Quickville if he did not pay them. It is claimed by the Guard Dog group that Chris paid the Idea Guys around $6,000 in the form of gift cards and video game accessories. Chris and Barb were left on the brink of foreclosure and Chris repeatedly claimed to need assistance with buying enough food for his family. Chris stopped caring about the financial crisis by 2019 because of the dimensional merge and the generous backing from Ally Hirschberg and other financial enablers. Chris continues to beg but only for conventions, toys and video games. He now also believes that he has a vast wealth in Quickville, Dimension C197, to pay off the creditors. But creditors do not buy into fictional worlds and having managed to sue him for at least $11,606 as of the 23rd of February 2022. Chris has access to Barb's online bank account and knows how to transfer her money into his own account. During the Insys Saga fallout, he admitted to taking $750 from Barb's account to fund a hotel room for himself. Given that Barb is elderly on a fixed income and Chris is lazy on a fixed income, it is unsurprising that many followers worry that the death of Barb could lead to a so-called homeless saga, a wet dream for A-loggers and weens, but devastating both for Chris and many of his followers. Owing to Chris's arrest on incest charges, his patron has been terminated, although financial enablers continue to send him money to his jail inmate account. Chris has made some efforts to generate income for their household over the past few years, bar that of actually finding a job, which include opening an Etsy shop in 2015. However, any profits gained would immediately go straight to toy purchases, an irresponsible move that would turn out to be a recurring problem that keeps the Chandlers in the red. The shop would eventually shut down from Chris lazily not fulfilling Etsy orders, but he would still find some revenue from the occasional eBay sales of select merch from the Horde. To further compound the issue, Chris has been instilled with a very real belief that fans are willing to drop large sums of money into his bank account for absolutely nothing, an expectation that has since been strengthened by the $1,000 donation by DStex in September 2015. This belief would take on the form of the many begging videos that highlight the saga to this day. Barb, on the other hand, seems to have outstanding debts that dwarf Chris's financial handiwork. On September 2016, she faced lawsuits from Discover and Capital One for failing to pay the large amounts of her credit card debt, according to Virginia District Court records. It is worth noting that if it takes a lot of ignored debt collector calls over a long period of time to get a simple credit card escalated to a lawsuit, suggesting that Barb may have been outright ignoring making any payments whatsoever to her credit cards. Only time will tell if more credit companies begin to sue Barb for her neglect. In August 2016, Chris revealed that the household is still under a mortgage of $115,000, introducing a far more warring debt looming over the horizon. Both Chris and Barb continue to barely stay afloat with their lives thanks to their own tugboats, but their inactive lifestyle and reckless spending will not last forever at this rate. Despite it all, Chris has not once attempted to find a job. In April 2017, with the household finances near the breaking point, one of Chris's IRL friends informed him of DARS, or DARS, a service designed to help people with disabilities entering the workforce. Chris reacted with a temper tantrum, posting a multi-paragraph rant on not wanting to work. Like any terminally irresponsible adult, Chris likes to keep his bedroom filled with toys while keeping his wallet empty. Here's a list of known expenses Chris has made during the financial crisis collected from online postings and eBay purchase history. Some amounts are estimated, but all amounts are debilitating. During 2016, Chris was known to waste over $2,500 on toys. In late 2017, Chris spent a considerable amount of money to attain the Bronicon. A three-day pass ticket to around $60, but money spent on travel, food, souvenirs, and lodging is rounded to $2,000 or $3,000 by other attendees. Despite actively begging for money since 2016 and a near miss with foreclosure and homelessness in May 2018, Chris has not attempted to get a job. Then again, the last job he's had dates all the way back to 2003. One of his real-life friends, a woman,
woman from his Pokemon club named Alexa became concerned after seeing Chris repeatedly beg on Facebook. She suggested in November 2016 and again in April 2017 that he contact one of her family members who works at the Virginia DARS, a government service that helps disabled individuals find work. At the first suggestion, Chris didn't follow through and at the second he fired off a rant against getting a job, forcing Alexa to back down. In his rant, Chris gave the following flimsy excuses. He was too busy helping Barb and the pets despite having no trouble in going on a three-day trip to another state without bringing them along in August 2017. Trolls ruined his background check slash reputation. While it is true that the Google search on Chris reveals unsavory details, there are only records of facts and there are agencies that find work for slow in the mind adults that would not care about minor crimes or indiscretions. Finding a job runs the risk of being discriminated against for his Tom girl gender, stress, and he fears being incompetent. Later on, Chris added more excuses for not wanting to work. In October 2017, Chris claimed that he was too busy with Quickville and his imaginary friends in addition to helping Barb and the pets. In June 2019, Chris claimed that he was already employed by God to oversee the dimensional merge. Most of his claimed reasons hold no weight. A background check, as explained by Jackie and Kim Wilson multiple times, only applies to legal records, and Chris's misdemeanors would not prevent him from getting a job. Fellow lol cows like William Elliot Waterman and Kenneth Engelhart also have their names linked to their internet shenanigans, yet they have gained employment. Furthermore, discrimination on the basis of gender is illegal, especially as a result of a Supreme Court ruling on the 15th of June 2020. In reality, getting a job would probably reduce his stress over needing to beg in order to afford more toys. His excuse for being fearful of making mistakes and his obsession over his imaginary friends are blocks set down by his own mind, revealing that rather than growing up and assuming responsibility for his future, he would rather remain a man-child forever. Chris's only plausible claim was in May 2018 when he feared that Weens and Alogs will harass him at work, similar to how they harassed the management of the Endgames and Anytime Fitness into banning him. Buying things from Chris and or donating to him is not at all recommended, mainly because Chris has habitually neglected his customers, he has repeatedly failed to ship orders to his buyers on time and will ignore messages from customers asking about their purchases or giving a myriad of excuses as to why they haven't shipped. If he does get around to shipping them, his naive methods of packaging often cause the item to arrive damaged. Other times, he simply won't ship the item at all, as seen perfectly with his Patreon. If Chris is angry enough, he can use your information against you. This was infamously seen when Mr. Smith attempted to purchase a medallion from Chris and after Chris failed to make and ship one, he filed a claim against him on eBay, causing Chris's PayPal to be locked. Chris responded by furiously doxing Mr. Smith and another buyer on Facebook, both of whom eventually received prank calls from Weens. The information that PayPal releases to eBay sellers includes your full name, home address, email address, eBay username, and possibly phone number. In other words, the exact kind of information you wouldn't want a screeching man-child to post in a public place when it's followed by hundreds of cannibalistic internet trolls. Chris will piss away your money. As stated above, Chris and Barb have had a long history of irresponsible spending habits, which is the biggest reason why they've fallen into debt. Even if he does manage to ship something to you without any sort of hassle or claim he won't spend your cash on toys, chances are still extremely high that Chris will immediately blow your money on Legos, action figures, video games and or other stuff and then immediately go back to begging. Prior to Chris's arrest, Barb claimed $900 of Chris's tugboat each month to pay the active mortgage on 14 Branchland Court. The seriousness of the financial crisis combined with Chris's impulse spending have led many followers of Chris to speculate on whether the passing of Barb will lead to financial ruin. Chris's future revenue, other than monthly tugboat and fan support, is likely to be very limited, with some of his followers admitting that Chris will never get any kind of loan or credit. Even if Chris were to reverse his stance and try to get a job, nearly all potential employers would be unwilling to take on someone with little to no skill and over a decade of real-life internet notoriety. Both the state of Virginia and the US federal government have programs intended to help the disabled secure independent living, most famously Section 8 housing. A number of followers have suggested that Chris should sign up for it, although these involve lengthy application processes and possibly several months of wait. On the contrary, financial ruin may be a wet dream for A-loggers and weens, but it would be devastating for both Chris and many of his followers. The 2014 house fire caused a number of followers to doubt whether Chris will be able to cope with sleeping rough with little more than his clothes and a medallion, especially after 
being pampered with toys and video games for many, many years. Homelessness would also threaten on the steady supply of fresh drama that continues to attract new fans and followers from all walks of life and leave them wondering what will happen to Chris and what will he do. During Chris's stay in jail, not only would he beg for people to donate to his inmate account, but also beg for people to help pay off Barb's mortgage and to have her relocated so he could move back in once he was released. However, there's been speculation that Chris had been placed in Section 8 housing upon release. Whether or not his tugboat was suspended, the money cannot be garnished by the creditors. So as it stands, it seems that Chris may not be too worried about paying off his unsecured debt, as he has other more important things to deal with. As for Barb, her debt is secured debt. While she's still paying it off with her own tugboat, considering she's been spotted at 14 BC as recent as August 2023, it's very likely the house will be foreclosed once she kicks the bucket. And that was the end of the video ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it make sure to like and subscribe and if you want any specific saga to be covered leave a comment in the comment section because I always check all the comments. And with that said, see ya!